When mathematicians started running electric signals through copper channels etched in silicone, they created a tool that could perform a massive amount of calculations in a fraction of a second. It allowed them to step back from working out crucial but mundane calculations and gave them more time to focus on other aspects of their problems. They found ways to store and recall these signals. There was no more need for volumes of records stacked on high wooden shelves. Over the next couple of years, programming languages and GUI operating systems were created in order to make it easier to interact with these devices. Terminals shared data over vast distances to form giant networks of interconnected information. With vast amounts of information being processed, it was becoming more difficult to keep up with the results. More time and people were needed to make sense of all the noise, or at least transform it into a form that would make it easier to understand. Nominal and numerical dams were used to filter out unwanted data, but even this wasn't enough as the time and experience needed to analyse the data was growing faster than anticipated. Artificial intelligence has captivated our minds for the last 60 or so years. I remember watching different TV shows when I was younger and seeing these mechanical beings who could overcome obstacles by a simple hardware upgrade and could go on to do extraordinary things without the limits of a fleshy bipedal monoform. Whether it was watching data perform incredible feats of logic, the Transformers travelling large distances by turning into vehicles, or even this guy. Watching this new type of life form combine the power of a machine with the best parts of being human was intriguing and led to some really odd fanfiction. Not by me. If I was going to explain the purpose of artificial intelligence, I'd use the example of trying to pick out faces in a bunch of photos. A computer would be able to do this a lot quicker than a person, but while most people would intuitively be able to identify a real face, a computer needs to be able to quantify this information and measure it numerically. If a face comes down to simple shapes like ellipses and semicircles, then it could be quite confusing as to why this is a face and this isn't. We needed a better way to translate our requests into a form a machine would understand. To do this, we had to think about how our minds analyse, process and recognise these details and hard code procedures that would try and repeat those steps. This translating of what we want to a virtual representation is quite complex. So instead of us spending long hours working at this conversion, the goal of AI is to make a machine understand us. While there has been remarkable breakthroughs over the past few years in medical research, image recognition and game development, there has also been a lot of bad press as well, mainly from detractors who say that AI is dangerous, followed by something along the lines of it's going to get really smart, really mad and then try to take over the world. Now I'm not saying if misused, artificial intelligence has no risk, but given the amount of attention this has been getting from the media recently, I think there's a lot of sensationalism that is trying to make out like we are close to some sort of doomsday level scenario. And I want to talk about why I think we're not. So let's talk about some of the reasons why AI won't destroy the world. We have an imagination that lets us innovate new ways of doing things, while at the same time creates fear and suspicion of what we do. It's not a modern occurrence to let anxiety distort our perception of change. When phones first came out, some people thought it was an unnatural way to communicate, and why would anyone want to hear your words with a slightly distorted voice? There were people who thought that a photo could steal your soul. Or remember Y2K? The millennium bug, which would reset a bunch of clocks on some machines, and the world believed it was on the verge of a nuclear winter. Because of this, I can't help think we're falling into the same pattern of letting the fantasy of what we think AI can do with what it does do. Think about the Facebook robots that were reported to have met up a language. This received a lot of attention and people thought that the robots were having some sort of clandestine conversation. Facebook has debunked this as something not to worry about, but the fact that a simple unexpected result from a prototype prompted such a reaction shows that there's a lot of sensitivity towards this. While on one hand we can be pessimistic about the future, Funnily enough, we seem to be overly optimistic about how long it will take. I don't know if it was because of movies, Cold War posturing, or if it was actually what people thought, but there was a lot of expectations on the year 2000. Like it's 2017 and we still don't have flying cars, hoverboards, or holographic cinema ads. No moon colonies, jetpacks, or robot cleaners either. I feel like a 9 year old listing off what I didn't get for Christmas. I don't think it's hard to find an engineer or researcher who hasn't come up against a problem they thought would be a simple task only to have it go over budget or over time. Ignorance is bliss. And when we do something new, we are not always aware of the problems we're about to face. Even though we are now seeing people take the first steps towards some of these goals, the complexity of these ambitious projects was not always obvious until they went from mind to matter. Another question is, can we be trusted with this kind of power? Now, I don't feel too pessimistic at the moment, given how we've handled this sort of world changing event before. Nuclear weapons are one of the most dangerous weapons that have ever existed and they haunted the minds of people struggling to rebuild after World War II. 
and eventually the threat of nuclear war became so real that governments started working together to prevent irresponsible use of these weapons. And while disagreements haven't stopped, they have only been used twice in warfare in the last 70 years. I'm not undermining the devastating effects of this, but if countries can show that kind of restraint with nukes, they will probably do the same for AI as well. With the advent of AI, Groups are already forming with the intent to put in safeguards to prevent misuse. It's more likely that we will have some oversight in place to help with its responsible use. Anyways, these are just my own personal opinions and I could very well be wrong about this and if I am, let me know because I'm not an expert in the middle of this, I'm just a guy trying to understand it from the outside looking in. Maybe our fears are warranted, maybe we're a lot closer to the edge than I know and maybe we're more irresponsible than I think. I just hope looking at the past like this can help me frame the present correctly. Either way, I'm really optimistic about the future. I think the technology will improve to the point where we can offload large amounts of menial cognitive tasks. I just can't see it being a danger as quick as people think. There is tremendous possibilities from merging human understanding with raw meticulous computational power. I hope we can continue to use this technology to help us solve bigger problems, get to solutions faster and boost our understanding of the universe we live in. And maybe learn a little something about ourselves along the way.